am out of trafficking age. Like, if they trafficked me, it would be to, like, clean their house or something. But, Please, like, they would traffic you, okay? Do you think I would be trafficked? Yes! I like when my boyfriend is attracted to other women. If he's not, his body's not working. I mean this from a loving place. You need a therapist. She's not gonna sleep with you. Her boyfriend's allowed to sleep with other girls. She's not allowed <laughs> She's to sleep not with other men. Hey, do you want me to keep that in or do you want me to beat no, that? No, I like it. I would f with you because you're a dog for that one. I had no plan for like how I was gonna get out of this disease. I wanted to die every night because it was hell. I like to blame God sometimes. Sometimes like, you don't like to hold the weight of the world by yourself. It's a joke. Everyone gets so sensitive. And I get it because people don't have identities and they need to identify by what offends them. You know, like, Ooh. If, uh, yeah. yeah. Hey, what's up, guys? Welcome back. Today, we have a very special guest, Nikki Glazer. For those of you guys who don't know who she is, she's an amazing stand up comedian. But today is not only just about laughs, today, we dive deep into the heart of this stand up comedian. I hope you guys enjoyed today's episode. Totally. I want, like, just snatched headphones. What about, like, like just... vibrating headphones? Like, it's, it's kind of like a. Totally, but like for your brain. Hey man, hey man, what's a, wrong with you? This is gonna be a sexual as, episode, George. As soon as, as, totally soon as the mics turn on, this guy turns into you. More I could have used it. vibrating <laughs> headphones. The other day, my um, my vibrator like just stopped working. Like I plugged it in. And if I don't have vib if I don't have a toy, I, ca I can't come. Like it's just I can't use my hand. I'm not, I, I don't even know how to do oh, that. Oh, it's these kind of podcasts. Okay, so okay. So I can't. So I would have. I was like, what else do I have in my luggage that vibrates? And I was like, my toothbrush, but like just the handle. I was like, that's too weird. That's just like Oral not. B. It sounds like a bad stand-up comedy joke. So, but I vibrating headphones would have been nice in that. Can I just one second? Yes. <clears throat> Welcome back uh, to today's show. What a great way to start today's episode, uh, Nikki. I. I am, uh, I'm going to be blatantly honest and oh, brutally no. honest. I don't like that. Nah, nah. I, you can handle it. You okay. have tough skin. You have such white teeth. Thank you. <laughs> They're really good. I appreciate it. I have fake? a girlfriend. You're relax. making his life right now because They're he was so worried about his teeth. Perfect. My God. I don't like how you didn't even care at all that I like. was like playing the jealous card. <laughs> you don't get jealous at all. What do you mean? What did you say about She those? never gets jealous, ever. Oh, I thought you said Jaws card. And I was Every like, guy needs a little bit of a jealousy. You know what I mean? Like, I want well, my girl to be like, like hey, I want to fuck that? you because you're white teeth. Yeah, I was just like, I want your teeth. teeth. I just, yeah, I wasn't like. What about my teeth? But I, I get what you're saying. Well, let me see them. Yeah, they're, well, there's a, they're, they're no, they're not too bad. No, no, they're not like horrible. His are just like blinding. Super, yeah, white. super yeah. white. I'm going back to my clean cut look. So like I had this depressed anxiety look for a bit. Yours master sweatshirt. I like it. <laughs> Golden. No, I'll my teeth it. aren't what my my teeth are the same. It's not like I can't get them this white. Wait, your teeth are very white. How do you and how do you get shirt. this? I just brush my teeth. No way. <laughs> that, you're not doing strips? No. Oh. I strip for my girl once in a while. Uh, okay. I see what <laughs> you're doing. And give one of those there. smiles. Uh-huh. Mm -hmm. Wait, I'm interested in the jealous thing. That was such an interesting moment between you two. Because you wanna you want her she's very secure. Yeah, and you very. want and you're not, probably. Very insecure. Mm. So you want her to have a little bit of what you have. Yeah, I'm, every anxious. time she even looks at a guy, I'm like, I'll rip my eyeballs right now. Don't do that. I'll pull Stop my hair it. Up. You're so not. He is no. so No, you're so, not. you're you 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 think he's secure? He's so secure. He, yeah. Never, ever. Like he's the one who talks about other guys. He's like, "Do you see that guy? He's so hot. Did you see him? Look at those abs." Right. Well, isn't that a way just to like test you out, like see what you're, what you're no, thinking? No, because I'll be like, "Yeah," and he'll be like, "What do you mean?" He's like, "Did you look?" And I'm like, no. "I can give you an example. Like for example, yeah. Nana, her boyfriend Matthew. That guy's like God took extra time on him. There's no way. <laughs> really? There's no way. I get, I get like she if she doesn't look at him, like now nah, you're just trying to make me feel better. That makes me feel a little bit insecure. Yeah, because then you're like, if you're not attracted to him, then what? Why are yeah. The, the, what it standard what am I, do make I make a mean? wish day? Yeah. What the fuck's totally. happening here, bro? I, I always, that's what I always say. Like, I like when my boyfriend is attracted to other women because if he's not, he's not, his body's not working. Thank you. Mm. Thank you. It's like he, he, he has cancer. So like he should go get a scan because like <laughs> if guys don't get horny for other women, they're not, they're, their, their blood isn't flowing right. Mm. Like it's, it doesn't mean he's going to fuck her. It's just like you, you should want to though. She's so hot. I literally had this conversation. When we first started dating. I go, and this is not even a joke. I go, there's, when we date, I don't just become gay. It doesn't happen. No, like so, should. if I see other girls or if I you see other guys, I find it yeah. a little bit more respectful. If you're honest, like oh, that person's really attractive. But I'm not going to do anything about yeah, it. Yeah, because then now I'm like, wow, you walked by that dude on set or acting or whatever. You're working with these models, and it's integrity. Thank you. You're, mm. That's what that's what women should celebrate in their men, and not that oh my, he does not he's not attracted to any other woman. That means there's something wrong with him, right? <laughs> if he's not attracted to any other woman, it, that's okay to be attracted. But does he try to fuck them? Does 
Does he try to get validation from them? Does he try to flirt? That's mm-hmm. where if he doesn't do that, he has integrity. And that's what men really want to be celebrated for in relationships. Like, thank you for not fucking people for me. Like, truly, <laughs> thank you. And I know that's like, oh, that's a bare minimum. You don't want you can't fuck people. Oh, I'm so sorry. You can't. But it is hard for men to not want to, like, spread their seeds. So, like, monogamy is not natural. So. I do appreciate that my boyfriend doesn't fuck other people, even though he probably has the desire to, because he loves me, and that's integrity. Is he allowed to, though? Like, if he does... Really? Yeah. I mean, I wouldn't care. He doesn't do it, but I I just don't care. I don't look at sex as, like... um, I mean, I definitely think sex can be an expression and a... Uh, it can build upon love and create love between two people and is meaningful. But I think sex, when it's just like sex, it's like if you played tennis with someone or like someone cooked him a meal, like I'm not gonna be like, she cooked you a meal. Like you want to be with her. Like most guys that like get a random blowjob are not going to like, leave their wives for that woman they're kind of going to be like oh this is weird i regret doing this like is that I don't... because you want to be sleeping with other men no as well? no it's not that it really is like it's a i think i like the competition still i like to feel like i'm always earning something and i'm always like wow i got this thing that other women want i think there's something about that like there's a mm. trophy it, like he's desirable to other women so i want verification that it's true okay he slept with someone else obviously this woman is attracted to him good and good luck lady Mm -hmm. trying to like you think that you're gonna get him forever because you probably do in my mind i'm like she wants him she's she's gonna convince him to be like with her forever and leave me no you're not good luck you can fuck him maybe better than i can but like not really like because and if they can, I don't, I, if he wants to leave me for her, then go. I don't know. I just, he, this is not a thing that he you, does, but I just recently had a conversation. I was like, I think I need you to like get out there again. And like, that's the weirdest thing. <laughs> some, Being I, in I a just, relationship and having your girlfriend tell you that is like, that's so weird. It can sounds I, like that's amazing, but most guys don't want it. Most guys kind of want to be locked in. Uh, even though they say they don't want to. I mean this from like a. A loving place. <laughs> okay. I mean, I'm you need a therapist. You, there's, I, I no, have there, one. There's, 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 no, nothing wrong. there's no way that you're okay with your man going and fooling around with another I woman. I really don't care. But okay, it's, You don't I, love him then. Yeah. Uh, no, mm. that's not true. The thing is, I just don't... I don't think of sex as like... It means that he wants... If, if he were to watch Succession with this girl, yeah. fuck no. If he... If he, You know, like... <laughs> there are things that we do that are like intimate. Are you he fucking with me or are no, you just saying this shit? I just don't think sex is that important like i think it's just a thing a guy needs to do he just needs to nut and then he gets on with his day he's not like thinking Mm. about her all day in fact guys when they nut they stop thinking about the girl they're like okay i'm done immediately but there's something that i find like don't you feel like the the moral aspect of like i want it but i won't have it because i have you and then we could be together in that right, sexual but, uh, type of way. I just, uh, I don't think I'm enough woman for one. I, I like the, the idea that he's like you for the rest of my life. I'm like, what? what? Really? That's Are you what, serious? Dude? I just, you're fucking incredible. I yeah, am, you're, but you're, like you're stunning, very sharp you're hilarious, and beautiful. you're smart. I know, I know all these things, but I don't think any woman is an, I think men are meant to like have multiple partners and so are women. And that's another whole argument, but I think men are less likely to um, let women like branch out and do other things. So I just, maybe I'm, I mean, this is pretty much a poly relationship I'm talking about. I think mm-hmm. I'm like into that. Like, I just don't, I'm not threatened by it as long as I'm the main one and I get to know about what's going on. So, okay. So like there's other relationships religions that people like have multiple wives no you're way. saying you're so no okay. way because I, I don't you want to are have a, a no, roller coaster no, man no, no <laughs> I need to, I need to, hold on i need to just lock this in so you're saying physical okay <laughs> emotional not okay yeah that's just for me though i'm sure there's people that are like oh he can have an emotional relationship he can have another girlfriend i don't care but i want to be I, I think the emotion is more important to me than the sex the mm. sex kind of turns me on like he went to a strip club recently and i was like did you talk to anyone like is there a vibe like i wanted to hear all about it like i want to go and just watch in the corner not like a cuck like i'm like ooh, tied up like i wish i could poke him like i want to be in the corner like yeah my my guy is like fucking getting turned on that girl kind of wants him like it's like hot to me because i am competitive and i want the best thing so i want something that's very highly desirable and i think that's it mm-hmm. i think that's what i, I, I don't I'm, know because so there's so many jokes them. and real so i'm just gonna slip jokes and seriousness okay in this. get it okay so first of all fucking i'm gonna this is gonna be a crazy podcast i it's, already know it's nuts if, uh, freaking by the way i'm trying to fix my swing so okay. freaking that's gonna be crazy okay and then second of all <laughs> my serious jab is the quality of man is not your best then because no man would ever treat you with that integrity but i'm asking for it it doesn't it matter if she on. asked me for that then i would calibrate her brain 
and be like, that's well, not Well, he's not doing it. I will say that my boyfriend's not doing the things well, that I, I mean, want. I mean, you shouldn't. You're an, an amazing woman. If he, it, There's a difference from a man looking at another woman lustfully versus acting on that lustful act. Because if I had but a woman I like you, no disrespect to. to you, if I had a woman like you, I would, instead of focusing my energy on fucking other girls, I'm focusing my energy on building us a future. Okay. Do you get what I'm saying? Yeah, it's kind of hot. I'm trying to break your walls. I'm trying to build these walls. What do you like, want? A master bedroom? <laughs> yeah, you're right. I think I, it's a self esteem issue, maybe. But which it's, is crazy because like which you're competitive, it. a competitive nature is a self esteem issue. Like I need to be winning. I need I need something that other girls want. Like it's not mm-hmm. enough that it's just like I want it. I need that car. I need that. Uh, I'm not really a materialistic person, but when it comes to people or like relationships, I want something that's or a job. I want a career that's highly desirable. I want I want think like it um, motivates you yeah but it's a it's a self-esteem issue i think double-edged right. sword because you have the your dreams right you are on the biggest stages you're killing it you're 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 at a level right now where other female comics are looking up to you and that you do, you can't get there until you have that competitive nature but if you notice and you take a glimpse out of all the greats they're all fucked up and right. their lives are not worth anything no, fun. No, I know. So it's so you have damaging. the ability right now what are you like 25 <laughs> I that's think he's being so serious. funny. No, you're not. Well, Shut how old up. Are you? I'm 39. 39? Yeah, that's really sweet. That was you were a good actor, and that <laughs> no, really made me feel so good. So, okay, so you're 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 in your 30s, but you look like you're in your 20s. That's re- no, and I don't. But thank you. Leave okay. a comment. No, you really I'm not no, you really don't leave a comment. Do not leave a comment. I don't want to hear how old you think don't I am. Don't listen to her. You don't listen to me. Leave a comment. This is my podcast, not Please. hers. Uh, she's not going to sleep with you. Her boyfriend's allowed to sleep with other girls. She's not allowed to sleep with other men. So do not leave that comment. That's really nice. Okay. Okay. Thank you. That's so stupid. No. You got you like planted her to walk through. We we rehearsed this like two people. Hold the other two people. Hold the two people. <laughs> no, I'm okay, just kidding. So, yes, Let I, your man sleep with other yes, women. Okay. No. So, <laughs> now that you know I'm 39, I didn't know you were 39. You get, now I get it. Yes, I didn't even know you were old news today. The expiration date. Now I get it. I get Dude, it. That's so funny. No, 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 no. Okay. But, um, how old is your man? He's 42. I think. Okay, cool. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, I, I, listen, all joking aside, you're a woman worth so much more than what you're putting yourself out to be. If this man's listening, he should be smart and keep on not having sex with a girl. But I wouldn't encourage that behavior because then he'll. I just want to hear about it, though. This is my problem is I get horned up. Like, our foreplay is me being like, Tell me about a girl like you hooked up before us. Like I want to hear about all. I I it, I can't help that it turns me on more than anything when are I you, feel threatened. Are you bisexual? Mm-mm. No, I don't. I don't want to have any. I don't want to like. He sometimes wants to bring a third party, and I'm like, I don't want to eat. Pussy. Like I just want you to eat. Pussy. Like I just don't. I don't. I want to watch you eat. Sorry, pussy, Mom, but I, I know don't, you're watching. I'm so sorry. <laughs> Is this not that like, we don't do it like this? <laughs> no, but no, I no. Just, do everything you're about. I just um. I'm so sorry, Mom. And um. But I uh. <laughs> but I don't. Yeah, I'm not interested in, in women like that. At least. At least I. I don't know. I've so never you just it, want the man that every other girl wants. Yeah, and I kind of like want to. I want to hear about. So anyway, the reason this I did I discovered this about myself was that whenever I was hooking up with my boyfriend or like with other with guys, I would just want to hear about when they hooked up with other women. I don't know why. I just thought it was hot. Like the beginning stages where it's like, when did you make a first move? Like that stuff is all is like really hot to me. And my boyfriend like ran out of stories to tell because there's only so many women he's hooked up with before me. There's like dozens, but it's only so many good stories. Yeah, right. And so I was like, I think you need more. Like I know where all these go. They're not enticing to me anymore. So like go make more stories. Okay, fair enough. Question: so Did you he has how, what, what age was your first intimate relationship? Oh, that's a great question. Uh, twenty-four. Twenty-four, <laughs> um, which late. is crazy because I thought you were twenty-four. Uh, <laughs> t- twenty-four, and w- and was he older or younger than you? He was my age. And was he was he trying to make you jealous by keep reminding you of like who he was? No, no, I was like no, I, I've never been in like um, no, I've never been in that kind of relationship before. Of uh, I, I've. Until this relationship that I'm in, it's been 10 years off and on. Holy um, cow. Yeah, no I know. Well, it's been well, so Is it long. only been off and on because you want him to go collect more stories and then come back? <laughs> no, but that's interesting. He's gone. That has been good for us that it, yeah. we've had those breaks. <laughs> and then we come back and I'm like, what'd you get done? Show me some pictures. But, um, Show me some pictures. I've what seen, some, I've seen some footage. It's been good. But... um. He, uh, no, it's been off and on because we just like, br- we just like break up and we think we're never going to get back together and then we end up 
you know, talking again. And then we're like, we'll hang out as friends. And then it just ends up back together. And we've like changed a lot over 10 years. It's been good. And then, um, but before then I was never, I was always in long distance relationships or I would seek out men who had girlfriends or like just guys that were unavailable. You're that, like, on, couldn't your, on like your me. Ariana Grande vibe. Yeah. I mean, I like kind of relate to that. I mean, I don't relate to breaking someone up that just had a baby with a woman. I mean, that seems <laughs> yeah. pretty insane. Break up a marriage, but... but... <laughs> You're a fucking liar, bro. You're at home, you're like, tell me, how old was the kid? How old was the kid? <laughs> no. Yes! Yes! <laughs> yes! Oh, she's still pregnant? Fuck yes. yes. Um, no, your bit was hilarious when uh, in one of your stand-ups you were talking about how you were in a long-distance relationship and then he came, he was throwing up in the alley. Yes, you made him look- dude, yes. He, like, cheated <laughs> so on me. Funny. And, like, yeah, he was... Um, he, I was just always it's dating fun. guys who were alcoholics, pieces of shit. Like, kind of just... Not pieces of shit, just, like, really just um weren't able to love me because i didn't like myself i mean i do have a self-esteem issue it's much better than it was before but um yeah i just never wanted and then i would always pursue men that like could not love me and Mm. then i would get frustrated when i'd be like they don't like me but it's like i'm choosing men who like clearly won't so it's my because i don't because i'm scared to be loved i feel like you're more in love with the achievement aspects of your life than the the relationship aspects of your life. Yeah, I, th- I think that's a, tr- a true statement. Yeah. I always want, that's why I think breaking up and getting back together, like it always feels like an achievement when we get back together. It's like I, I earned something. Like I had to work to convince him, let's get back together. Then I get it. And then I'm kind of like, all right, now I'm yeah. comfortable. I don't that's like the, being comfortable. You need, it's, I think a lot of people too, like they need the highs and the lows. Yeah. It's the mm. adrenaline rush of that's like the it. highs and lows. That's so it. I think, and, and dude, this is going to sound like I'm talking about myself. And I'm not. I'm just truly just yeah. reflecting. Um, the moments that I notice arouse my girlfriend more is when I go like, I enough, I'm working. And like she just likes the fact that I go and get and I hunt and I when get he's my in shit. A business meeting? And yeah. like, like she she'll tell me all the time, she's like, dude, the way you talk to that guy and you got shit done. Like she loves a a, a hunter aspect of it. Mm. And that hunter needs to know, and a lot of men don't know how to do this. Hey babe, shut up right now. I need to go hunt. Yes. And you need mm. that man to kind of give you that, like, hey, enough. Go over there. And that will give you enough of the like, oh, I need to earn his like attention later. That's a really good point. Wow, so you're very smart. How old are you? I'm twenty. Not, no, 30 now. I'm 30. Okay, you're very smart. You're very Fun. intelligent. Do you go to therapy? Do you re- do you just read a lot of books about this I, stuff? I, I reflect on myself. I always I always attack myself. I don't. That's I, a really good uh, um, kind of um, th- thing to send me off with. Of like maybe that's what you need is just you want something that's unattainable. You want to keep like a, trying to fight for his attention and to earn him. Maybe he needs to set some boundaries to like well, horn you up. It's a very attractive Built quality you have of trying to. Uh, continue to be sexually attracted to your man a lot of women go off like instead of being like oh you go off they're they're the ones that goes off you have a loyalty in your heart yeah so i would just say pivot the man no no shot at the 10 year dude but no. uh i need I, I would love to see you with a man that you're like baby baby look what i did look what i did today and he's like no no babe i'm busy doing something that you know is great and you're like fuck okay like i'm gonna wait and just i can't wait to like yeah so instead him- of fucking a woman he's like he's fucking up the world for a, you yeah mm. a career and, and then when you have a when you have children Children or, or I don't know if you want to adopt or have children or you're like what, thinking about my egg situation yeah, at 39. Well, you're yeah, like, if just, you want to adopt or <coughs> a surrogate. <laughs> So I'm just, uh, just uh, uh, yeah, obviously adoption, right? So if you ever wanted to adopt somebody, uh, that that the the that sexual tension that you have of like, oh, he's gonna go out is, is, is seriously gonna burn out when you have a family. Mm. And you, I agree. Yeah. 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 And, and, and listen, like I could have sat here and we could have fucked around and had so many bits, but I, when I met you, you're just I could feel like you're such a good person Aww, that thanks. I want to push you off in that right direction because I think that you, you that, like I was. David's been trying to get me to have you on the podcast since we first started, and I had already a set list. And I'm like, I don't want to have her too early because we're not going to have a strong enough audience. Aww. And then once I got to research who you are, I'm very impressed of what you've done, and I'm excited to see what you're going to do next. Wow, thanks. I, I just I want to make sure that I cut ties from like what's joking, what's serious, yeah. joking. Have all the fun, but serious is like you're worth way more than what you're thanks, putting man. yourself on. Okay, me. thank you. Yeah, well I said, will. Well said. Yeah, I'll take that. But I want to actually take it back to when you were dating because I feel like you have some crazy dating stories. Then, like, what- I mean, I just like went for the wrong type of person, and uh, no, I didn't date like a lot. I was really, um, I talk a lot about sex on stage. Obviously, I'm very open about talking all- about all that. I was just like, I was a prude. I didn't have a boyfriend till I was 24. I didn't have sex till I was 21. I was really scared of sex and scared of dating and scared of men in general. And then I think when I f- first started having sex, I was like. Well, this is easier than I thought it'd be. I thought it was like really scary. I didn't kiss a boy all through high school. I never had a boyfriend in high school. Like I liked boys so much, but I was just like 
scared. I just couldn't picture myself like kissing someone. Like, oh, Wait, I'm so, so how awkward. did you make that jump from like for so long up until you're 24? That's long. You I really to owe be- it to alcohol. <laughs> is honestly what I owe it to. I don't think I would have ever had the the lack of nerves to mm-hmm. like I think most people lubricate that kind of nervous energy of like being horny and not knowing what to do with it. Like how do you make a first move on a girl? Can, it's it's hard. so easy when you're drunk, but it is so yeah. hard when you're yeah, not. Yeah, totally. So and when true. I quit drinking at, at 27, so I, I was drinking from like 21 until 27 pretty much. And when I quit drinking at 27, man, dating again was, it's starting over. Like, mm. how do I get horny enough that I think this is a good idea? Because it is weird to go from talking to someone on a date yeah. to like cut to an hour later, you're both like, <laughs> like, like humping and sweating and like licking each other's genitals. Like that's weird. You gotta be kind of crazy. Great choice of words, yeah. right? You know, like that's what you're doing though. But it's like, and, and right before that you were like, so tell me about your sister mm, and like eating and worrying about having parsley in your teeth. And then you're like, in his balls. And like, yeah. how do you get from there to there without alcohol? It's, 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 you have to be either overwhelmed with horniness, which women don't generally get. Men can get there. Women d- don't generally get like, I'm so horny. I will do anything. Like we can get there, but it takes a lot also, of foreplay. It's not just like a dinner that'll get us there. So usually alcohol is what women rely on to get mm-hmm. them to that state of like, I'm willing to like get really funky right now. Yeah, now, never, now, that, now that you're sober, how do you get to that level? Like with I have to like wait it out. I have wait, to you're like, sober? Yeah. For I mean, I, I, I smoke a little weed. Um, th- since I was 27, so three years ago, based on what you know. Uh, <laughs> so, 11 so, so 11 years, years yeah. That's good for you. Coming yeah. up on 12. Was it wrecking your life? Is that why you were... It was just like, it was going to be a hindrance to my career success. It was slowing you down. Mm-hmm. Like, I just looked at the people that whose career I wanted, and I was like, man, they don't drink. That's like, that's the difference between them and me, is like, I drink, and my hangovers were just too brutal. And then I would just be in bed all day nursing that. And so I just was like, I can't... I, let's just see what happens without it. And then suddenly my career just went on an upswing. It could have been coincidental, You're but like, I don't think somehow, it was. I don't know. But. Yeah. I'm not like laying in bed barfing all day and then like getting home and overeating and feeling like shit and mm-hmm. pimply and just gross and dry and look and, and, and saying dumb things and all my relationships being based around because I liked having sex, but I couldn't have sex without alcohol. And I saw that disconnect. I saw there's a problem there because mm. I would like sleep over at a guy's place, have sex the night before, wake up in the morning sober. And then he wants to have sex again. And I'm like, ooh, like, do, do you have any booze? Because that's the only way I... C- so I realized the only reason I was sleeping with these people is because I was drunk. I didn't really even like them. So mm-hmm. I was like, let's take it away and see what happens. And it took a really long time before I was like attracted enough to someone to, you know, be able to do that stuff without drinking. Wow. Because I was just so weirded out by sex. So Still then am. how did you become so comfortable to be on stage to talk about sex? Because I feel like that's such a... A lot of people, you know, are very uncomfortable yeah. being so open, going into such detail the way that you do. So yeah. what made you to go from only being able to have sex while you're drunk to then being able to do that sober? I think it's I think because I was so scared about sex when I was coming up and when I was a young girl that the second I was able to start talking on a microphone in front of people and being able to say anything I wanted, I was like, I want to say the things that I wondered about when I was young. Like, I want to be mm. the voice for women that are like, what happens in there? What to, what should I expect? Like, mm. I know I watch porn, I watch it in movies, but like, what is it really about? So it was kind of, um, I felt like a duty to my younger self to like fill in the gaps of my knowledge with sex now that I had experienced some of it. So I think that's it. And I also just don't, it's like the way I look at sex, like I was saying, like a tennis game or like a, a sharing a meal with someone. Like, I don't, I don't have this like, that's my sex life. You can't know about that. Like I just, whatever some people have, I don't have that. I just Mm. don't have that filter when it feels, and I wish I did because it makes people, it makes people uncomfortable sometimes. I overshare and I feel weird about it afterwards when I find out people are. You're not ashamed of who you are. Not in that regard. Like it's almost like I am ashamed of it, but I, I gain back the. I, I I can control the narrative if I tell the story. Mm. Like I'm ashamed, like sex is so... That's it. I am trying to get rid of shame for people because I think mm. people have shame around sex. We, we don't talk about it openly. Like it's just like kind of embarrassing our sexual urges, the faces we make, the sounds we make, the people we have sex with, the, like the just everything about it's just like ugh. in American society, we're puritanical. We don't talk about sex. And I just feel like that makes it so people don't know what to expect when they get in there. And that's where like bad things happen when girls are like oh, I don't know, he, like, fucked my head, but I guess that's okay. And they're like, no, that's not okay that he fucked your, whatever, whatever made you, I just, I want to, I want to talk about sex in a way that makes it a little bit more um, easy for everyone to talk about. So I think that I'm just trying to get, and it's interesting. 
Yeah. It's the thing yeah, that no that one is. talks about. And it's the thing that motivates all of us at the very, even if you're asexual, your life is about not having sex. Like mm-hmm. a part of your identity is like, I don't want to do this thing that everyone wants to do. So sex is like constantly on our minds. It motivates everything. It's the reason that we all exist. Yet we don't talk about it. It just seems crazy. <laughs> it's so true. It's like, there's like five things that we as humans want, right? It's like food, sex, shelter, and like a feeling of importance. And we talk yeah. about the other four all the time, but we don't talk about sex ever. No. Yeah. Like, it's so it's strange that we don't. But it, and. Yeah, that that's that's why I just am so baffled by it because like it's funny that like my t- my sister is like please don't include me in any of your jokes about sex or anything because you know I'm a teacher and I'm like but you've been pregnant around your students like they know you've gotten <laughs> dick down like who are you well, that's well, reason? <laughs> she's like a high school teacher but it's like if I see a pregnant woman I'm like she had sex like that's where my mind goes like yeah. it's most of the time she's not like doing an in vitro thing and even so then her husband was like in a cup like Ooh! and like I think of that like I'm like wait what motivated him to do that like it's not that weird that we all we're all the product of a guy going like that's all of us Cliff every that. single person you see is like an orgasm it's crazy your it's perspective true. is hilarious let me just digest My- all of the cum jokes that we just made <laughs> no it's not jokes this is real george like this is re- like you are a product of of that noise no i get it i was hanging in my dad's not sack before i was here mm-hmm. here's you my thing it. how do we go okay well, let's just take it back to your stand-up you're like the Taylor Swift but fucking jokes, bro. Like that's the most terrifying thing in the world. If you're dating a chick that goes on stage and talks about her sex life, bro, that's intimidating to date. Yes, it is. So, I would agree. So uh, I, I, I like to think that's the reason I had so much trouble um, until I didn't in dating is that men were intimidated by me. Did you ever date anybody that was in the industry? Oh yeah. Tons. And you Almost never talked about it? Um, no, I've talked about it a little here and there, but it's, oh, it's always been comedians that like had girlfriends when they dated me. Like, I can't talk about it. You know, they're like married to the people they cheated on me with. Oh no. You know, like it's those kinds of things. Like I, it's not like I, I, please don't hate me uh, and think I'm a bad person. Like I didn't think those women were, I didn't know that they were even dating those women when I would hook up those, those guys. And Mm. now they're like, and so I can't really like ever talk about those things. Do you think they had one of those things where you were like, Go sleep with other uh, women. No, I think in some situations, yeah, where they like probably know about it, but and it was early on in their relationships where it wasn't like they weren't clearly defined yet or something. So I was maybe an overlap, but um, yeah, I used to always like go for comedians and um, yeah, I like a glitzy, like glamorous, like kind of showy person as much as the as much as anyone does, as much as any girl does, like a celebrity kind of guy. Like I'm, I'm totally like were, okay. So how did you get into this that. industry and, and stand up? Were you involved I, in it? Um, I went away to college my freshman year. I was anorexic. I had no friends. I was like a skeleton. No one would talk to me. I had like, literally I looked like I was on death's door cause I was. And so I, um, I was planning to die. Like I had no plan for like how I was going to get out of this disease. It was killing me. I, I had no, no way of getting out. I wanted to die every night because it was hell. And then, um, but I was really funny because no one wanted to be friends with me. So my personality just went cr- like through the roof and in high school, I was kind of like quiet and like, I was funny, but to my friends, not like I wasn't the class c- clown and I just didn't need to be, I was like, had my group of friends that was enough. But then in college I went off alone. I had no friends. And so I just became like funnier as a survival technique, I think, mm-hmm. because I remember my friends in college saying that they didn't, People would go to them and be like, we're worried about Nikki's going to die. And they're like, I forgot she was even anorexic because she's so funny. Like, I don't notice how she looks. So I was like, oh, it's working. You know, Mm -hmm. like my personality, like the how the fat kid is usually really funny because they're just don't look over here. Look here, you know, like distracting from the thing that they feel so insecure about. So it was around that time where um, people started saying you should be a comedian. And I had never considered it. I was like, oh, I don't know. I just had nothing to live for. I was, I wanted to be an actress. I wanted to be a singer, but I wasn't good at acting. I was okay at singing, but not good enough to like make it. And um, so I tried stand up comedy. And the first time I tried it, I was like, this is my reason to live. Like I got to f- find a cure for this wow, disease. So-, so I went to, um, I went to like my campus, uh, you know, psychiatry clinic, therapist clinic, and was like, can you please help me like beat this? Cause I just didn't know what to do. How did you beat it? I, I mean, it took so many years and I still struggle with like eating stuff, but it was, it never has even been close to as bad as back then. Um, I found a guy that he made, I felt so guilty when you have anorexia or you have an eating disorder, whether it's, you know, you overeat and you're obese or, or, or you undereat and you're anorexic or you're bulimic, whatever you are. You feel like it's your fault. You feel like you're choosing it. You can't really look at it like a disease. Mental illness is really hard to see it as like a disease and to have anyone have any fucking empathy for you, especially 
when you're anorexic or obese, people just go stop eating or, or just eat a sandwich or like, just, this is under your control. Just eat. This is, you have the medicine, just do it. But they don't understand you can't like, and I don't understand why I couldn't. I just know I've been through it and I couldn't eat just the way a person with cancer can't cure their own cancer on their own. I couldn't cure it on my own. And this doctor, this therapist I went to had, um, a stutter which was really interesting because he was able to empathize with me of this thing where people are like, just talk. And so he was like, and so he was like, just talk. Yeah. He was like, just, just, uh, 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 uh. like our sessions would take forever because he is a horrible stutter, but he, <laughs> I felt so understood. Right. I was like, this is half price, right? <laughs> I felt, I felt understood for the first time. Cause he was like, I understand why pe people are frustrated with my thing and make it seem like I'm choosing to do this. Right. And it yeah. seems like my choice and not, because I eventually finished the sentence, so clearly you know what to do. Just say it, idiot. Yeah. Yeah. And so he was able to make it feel like he said, okay, you know, t this is a chair. And he made me, like, talk to an empty chair and pretend, like, my disease was in the chair. And he made me, he said, um, picture yourself as Reagan on um, The Exorcist. Like, something late at night, like, just flew into your mouth. Like, uh, you got possessed. Like, you caught anorexia. You didn't, like... It's not something you are in control of. It's a voice in your head. Like you're possessed. Stop listening to that voice. Treat it like not like your voice. My, it's not Nikki being like, don't eat today. It's, it's the devil. Mm. So as long I was able to look at it like something else that I could beat as opposed to this thing that I was in control of. And mm. I think that's like the key to so much is like not trying to have control over it. Not trying to like cure your cancer like letting go and being like or like alcoholism like it's it's about like realizing you have no control like mm -hmm. the first step is like i have no control over alcohol well, my addiction to alcohol it's like you the first step is like releasing control and i think that really helped me as just as soon as i was like it's not your fault you're not like choosing to do this because it does seem like something when you see someone who's anorexic and you're like ew just eat bitch like it seems like they're also trying to be like hot and you're like, this isn't even working for you. And mine was not about like, I hope people think I'm skinny. Like it was so beyond that. So, yeah, of course. um, so yeah, I got over it within, I started doing stand up and that like, I just had a new motivation to live. So I was like, I, okay, I have, I, I just worked really hard on like beating it and, and, um, and That's incredible. yeah. And it, and it, it changed to bulimia and then it was binging and it was all a bunch of different things, exercising too much and hurting myself. But you have an um, addictive personality. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, definitely. Uh, I, I tell this to people all the time. I go, I have an addictive personality. Um, and I don't listen to the world. So if they're like, this is right or this is wrong, I stick to what I feel looks right or wrong. And I diligently work at it. In the double-edged sword of that, if I love something that's no good for me, mm. then all hell breaks loose because I just go full in. For example, uh, marijuana for me is, it, is is terrible because it's the only time that I can get away from my reflective thoughts 24/7. Um, and do you still smoke weed? Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm, but way less than I used to. Do you? I, I'm I'm the same way with weed. It's 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 the one thing that I can't like let go of, mm. and it, I really feel like it helps with my depression in the short term. Mm. I smoke a little weed, and whatever I'm worried about, whatever I'm sad about, goes away. And then I think in the long term, it kind of causes it. But it's that's the one thing that I have not been able to really let go from my life. But I also think that I, as soon as you just said I don't listen to anyone else, I listen to myself. I really thought about weed for myself because when I reach for the weed, I always think, no, this is good. Mm -hmm. You, this is good for you. You want this, trust your instincts that you want it. And then I start feeling stupider and feeling slower. And then I start going, wait, I think this is bad for me. It's like, you're already I, in the trap. Yeah, so man. those, the voices that you hear in your head, not to get like all spiritual on you. No, please. Uh, so I believe in Christ, right? So I read the Bible. And everything you're speaking about is what Apostle Paul talks about. And he's like, it, you shouldn't feel bad of what you think. You should feel bad about your actions. So that voice in your head is like, don't eat. You're right. It is the devil. He, yeah. he, he's trying to tarnish your temple, your body, the thing that fulfills you. Um, and then that marijuana is, is great up until the point you're high. And then you're like, fuck, I'm here. And imagine those voices that are like, get you high, they're gone. Because they already Whoa. did their job. It's kind of like that guy at the bar is like, come on, take another drink. Come on with me. As soon as you guys have sex, it's like he's, you don't hear his voice anymore. He's gone. So he accomplished what he needed and he left. Wow. So just What do you do with weed now though? Like do you listen <laughs> to those voices? Like when you, know, you do so when I you used do to it a wake up bit, and like, smoke and right. like I would secretly smoke too. So like I would oh, be yeah. high and around people and they didn't know. I was like yeah. it was a it was a bad thing. And then so I just started 
I, I was like, oh, I got to I gotta really attack this. And the first the first step of attacking is being honest. Can I ask you why you thought you had to attack it? What were the things that, like, the negatives about it? There was no negatives. You? That was the dangerous part. Oh, no. So why even quit? Because in the future, when I'm a father, when I'm a husband, when I have everything, there's a substance that is stringing along my life that could grow. Everything that I look at that I do in my life is a mustard seed, and I'm going to see the direction it's going to grow. So if I am addicted at the age of 29 when I started, okay, when I'm 35 am i going to be a pothead that's a father or am i going to be a diligent father so like i'm not worried about to next year or tomorrow i'm worried about where is this action taking me because yeah. the reap what you sow a lot of people reap something like for example if you're harvesting crops that are, are corn and you, you want watermelons after that you're like a lot of people are shocked why isn't this watermelon motherfucker you've been reaping corn this whole time and huh. you're only going to get corn so a lot of people will look at their own actions and blame everybody else so to to destroy that process i reflect and make sure that my my steps are where they're going to be in five years i'm planning and a lot of wow. people run away from it because they get overwhelmed well, what if i die in two years well you're a fucking idiot you haven't died <laughs> when you're 30 something years old so that type of mindset is stupid and you're focusing on death instead of living yes so two things i've kind of like noticed about you one that that theory of like you want your man to go out and get another woman mm -hmm. i feel like stems from your your growing up of you having that that mental mindset that you had and now is that girl inside of you achieving the things that she never thought she'd achieve. Huh. Do you get what I'm saying? It's like so that I'm guy that you never thought you would get. Not only I did I him get him. I need him to keep being that guy. I could still keep getting him. Right. I need to mm. keep. <clears throat> I told Belle, I go, it. the monogamy part wasn't hard for me uh, because I wanted to go sleep with other girls. The reason why me and her even ended up dating seriously is because she's the best sex I've ever had in my life. Mm -hmm. and, and I'm sorry to put that out there. We could cut anything I'm about to say that makes you uncomfortable. But it was the best sex I've ever had. The problem was I, I noticed that I missed the me being able to get the girl. So all my friends n not getting it. And then my charm, it's, totally. my, it's a performance. That's what I miss. It's the performance. I don't miss sex with other people. I just miss being like, I could... I am about to kiss him, and now it's done. Boom. So and uh, <laughs> It's uh, so true. It's really good. So what I did is I, I challenged that. So I talked to God about it. And in my heart, a few weeks later, God will goes, Will you talk oh, to him for me about it? I got you. I will. Okay. After I this, we'll pray together. Yet. Okay. It'll be great. Yeah. Well, put me in touch with him. I got you. Give me his number. Okay. <laughs> I got the guy. He's the hookup. He's one okay. call away. Uh, He's been DMing me, but I'm not. Yeah, not, not the right it's one. in my request. Not the right I one. haven't accepted Jesus it. doesn't really slide into the DMs. You know what I mean? But I focused that energy that I I wanted on like impressing other women and to impressing my crew. So like, it's like, I have that selfish need of like, I got people to, I need people to look at me like, dog, you're fucking it up. Right? Like I need that. Cause that's what I'm, I, that's what fills me. So I just you channeled it in other it ways in another way. Mm -hmm. And that's how you could have a successful relationship. Now, What do you mean when you talk to God, are you talking? Are you writing? Are you pr I like journal thinking? my thoughts okay. and I read the word. So okay. I, 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 I would dive into Proverbs if I was you. It's just wisdom. Like mm -hmm. it, the Proverbs is about a king between a relationship and a, a king and a God. And God goes, what, what do you want? And besides money, besides fame, besides power, he goes, God, I just want your wisdom. And so he gives him wisdom. And through this, he taught me that like, hey, the, you're going to have these feelings before I even met her. Wow. I had these feelings. Let me give you an example. You have gut feelings. When I was, uh, when I was in my single phase, a guy reminded me really quick. He goes, what are you waiting for? And my hoe ass at the time, I was like, I'm just fucking these bad bitches until the right one comes. And he goes, I thought you believed in God. And I go, I do. But when he brings me the right one, then I'm going to stop fucking around. And he goes, that doesn't make sense. Because if he's God, why would he give you a girl you don't, you don't even deserve right now? And I was like, whoa. So like a lot of us like to do actions and then blame God or blame everybody around us. So what I did is I started treating myself with respect, started treating every girl around me with respect. And then all of a sudden... This Lo angel. and behold, I, I find the right one. But here's the thing. If I kept treating girls disrespectfully, I might have accidentally blew past her and treated her disrespectfully. Yes, and, and you her, would have lost her forever. Exactly. The whole chance. So yeah. that was my actions, not hers. She, Interesting. So you got it. Who? Okay, but uh, forgive me for being so naive when it comes to praying and talking to God. When you're getting this feedback, what does it sound like to you when someone's saying, well. I think we all have it. I think you, you're just not, you're not those voices my frequencies that you have, the, that, that voice in your head that's like, don't eat. Yeah. You know, that's not a good place. And you right. said it yourself. It's a, it's a devil. It's the devil. Yeah. You, you like, as much as you know, that's the devil. When God speaks to you, you know, and it's, it's not right. audible. Not it's almost listening. like, you know, your, your gut feeling. Sometimes mm -hmm. you're like, oh, I just have a feeling. I have a feeling. It's, it's not us. 
like that's God, like, you know, kind of telling you like, hey, like you feel this way, like you're inclined to feel this way. It's like the Holy Spirit inside of you telling you, you know? Yeah. Okay. So I think maybe I'm just not tuned into that feeling as much. I'm more focused on that devil voice. I think you've, listen, I always tell people like this. I, a lot of Christians like to judge. A lot of people like to judge. They go, well, why isn't she like this? Why is she this? I think that you're perfectly where you need to be. Yeah. I think that everything in your life was meant to be. It was written, right? It comes to a time in everybody's life where they have to sit with themselves and be like, okay, there might be a creator of this place. And do I want to invite him in my life? Mm -hmm. And that's the only question that you have to really sit with. The, is he there? And if he is there... Do I want him in my life? And a lot of people run away from having that type of thought because the first thing you think of is like, fuck, I got to change everything. Like, I got to change everything. Um, and I was actually writing this in my journal. Um, and this is the best way that I could explain my relationship with God. Yeah. When I brought my relationship with God, it was selfish. It was like, I want all this stuff and I'm going to talk to the main man in charge and like get this stuff going. Mm -hmm. And then I secretly found out that all of my dreams and aspirations and my goals come so far down the list with me just spending time with them. And I was like, whoa, hold on. So you're telling me everything that I've ever wanted and I achieved, I achieved it, but then I'm looking over my shoulder at the time where I'm just reading the Bible at the park. And that version of me is so much more enjoyable than me killing this show or touring the world or making the money that Davidge is bringing to me. Mm -hmm. And I'm sitting here and I'm like, okay, only I could really know this. Davidge can't know that I have less fun here than here. So then selfishly, I was just like, oh, this, I'm just going to tap more into this. And then I would take those hard roads. I'm like, okay, well, I have to fix this, right? Like, I can't be a piece of shit here. I got to fix this up. And then when I'm done, it's, this is the best way I could feel. When you ever do like a good show, a great performance, right? Mm -hmm. It takes everything out of you. Mm -hmm. But when you're laying in bed and you're tired, that feeling of like, I got it done, it's like at a crazy different level. Yes. Do you get what I'm saying? That's, no, that's all. That's what I'm seeking. People go, what is like, what's your favorite thing in the world? Like, what's your happiest place? And I'm like, after I've done something extremely hard. Yeah. And uh, after I've achieved something, like through, after a long day of work and feeling like, uh, yeah, laying in bed and being like, I did it. And finally being able to rest knowing. But that's also punitive to me. Like, I feel like. I can't really relax unless I've suffered first. I really like suffering. Why do you think you need to do that? I don't know. What do you think? Because no, if there's I'm, demons, just, you're right? My guy. <laughs> if there's demons, mm -hmm. hypothetically, there's demons. Yeah. Well, they want you to suffer. They don't want you to do well. And your flesh doesn't come with you the next life. So your flesh is completely telling you the things that they want now and here that's mm -hmm. going to destroy you gluttony or anorexia. You know what I'm saying? Like you, and it's so funny because you would see a pastor on stage telling you about discipline, but he's fat, and you're like, dude, you can't even, yeah. you can't even get a diet and a workout right. in order. We all have issues. Sure. We all have these things in our head that are telling us to do what we shouldn't be doing. Uh, and and if any Christian ever comes up to you and asks like they're perfect and that you're so far away from them, the biggest disciple all of all of them was Paul, and he wrote to Romans. He goes, I do what I shouldn't do. Which Paul brother was he? Uh, he was Logan, <laughs> actually. <laughs> After the fight, he wrote a, It funny. was actually really great. He did yeah, a speech, and funny. he's like, sometimes the devil's going to make your way into his life. That's probably too... I probably have to cut that. But, um, yeah, okay, so Paul is the good. one that... So basically, Paul just basically explains that, like, life is just a, a, a journey of, like, you fighting what you know you shouldn't be doing. Mm. And that comes with so much better things out of life. Like, for example, I'll circle back to the guy not sleeping. Yeah, yeah it's, it's going to be really fucking tough to say no to the girl that wants to have sex with him at that time. But like when years go by, that same man is going to have two paths in his life through his actions. Either he's by himself or he's with a woman with a kid that is a broken home because of his own actions. Or he could be walking into an establishment that he built with his partner and he could look over and be like, this roof is secure for my children and my wife. These are consequences that every man's going to walk into. So you're saying, like, look ahead. Always. A man who doesn't plan for his life what plans for his failure. A woman? You said a man who doesn't plan. Well, I mean, I know you're talking. I was just But a, a woman. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, I, I don't really think that far in the future. That's a, maybe a problem for me because people are always like, you've achieved so much. Like, how did you, did you, did you know that I've never had goals? 
Like I've never, I, I mean, I'd, I've never sat down and been like, I want to do these things. I've kind of just like gone through life and been like, yeah, I'll do that. Yeah, that sounds fun. I just, I, I don't like to think too far ahead. I think because I am scared of death. And I think if I think too far ahead, that's where that goes. Mm-hmm. And it's because that's the inevitability. And if you think it. about it, like if you peel it back yeah, and you like say, for example, war, right? There's always people are scared of war, especially with the media putting out the war. Let's just hypothetically say the time of day is uh, all of us dying is in three months from now. Mm, okay. Your like actions would be way different. Yes. Your actions, when you get, when a man who has cancer finds out he has cancer, he's not caring about his work anymore. He's caring about his mother. He's caring about his father. Mm-hmm. He's caring about going to the park with his dog that he promised that he would take to the park. All of his shit changes immediately as soon as you put a time and frame on your death. So it's funny that people say, well, I'm scared of death, so I don't plan. Nah, you're just scared of failure. You're scared of you thinking you're not good enough. You're scared of that if you do put yourself to it, it's not going to work. And then now you have to live your life knowing you're a piece of shit that can't get anything done. Oh, God. So it, it, it's it's you really just have to face your demon and just realize this. Regardless of where you're at, right? Like say from this day forward, you go on the next tour and you bomb and everybody in the world is like, oh, she's terrible. And she moves on. This is the same grave you're going to have of you being Yes. Fucking the biggest that star in the world me. or the worst star in the world. So you, even if you were King David himself in a hundred years from now, no one's ever going to know your name. Yeah. No, no I know. Mm. I always think that mm. I, that always brings me so much peace. You know why? Because you're not achieving something for everybody wants to achieve a legacy so they can leave behind. Mm. Everything will be destroyed someday. You will be a, mm. a, a fossil that is indistinguishable from Abraham Lincoln, from Obama. Like I will be as remembered as Obama sometime in the future. Is it, We're not that special. You know but, what I mean? Yeah. We're all not that special. Yeah. But well, you know what though? Sometimes I will say, sometimes it is best to look at what's right in front of you because then like you don't want to overwhelm yourself too much you want to plan for the future 100 percent. you want to plan you want to be smart you know what i mean but i think also too when it comes to your goals if you're looking at what's in right in front of you then you're not overwhelming yourself and you're able to kind of like be more progressive you yes. know and accomplishing the task well that's because you already had the vision right so like, yeah you, have a vision but you i'm know. talking specifically with people that don't even have a vision they don't have a dream yet right a lot of people say step one uh is like do something it's like no step one's dream no and i yeah i think you're right i, I it's not that i'd never had goals because i do have i have goals of like i just want to i want to be happy and, and i think i had you know early goals of i want to be on television i want to perform in some way I, I would like to be friends with that kind of person and that kind of and, and and be in the same like social circles and i've achieved all of those things so i think there was there was always a part of me in high school my friends used to always say because i would i was really obsessed with dave matthews band in high school mm-hmm. and um <laughs> and i just was in love with him and i would always tell my friends like I'm going to meet him someday. Like, there's no doubt about it. And they were like, you're going to win some like radio contest. I'm like, no, I'm going to be like famous. And that's how like, and they were just like, ew. Like, I mean, now I think with this generation, probably your generation, people in high school were more like, I'm going to be famous someday. People didn't, maybe like 5% of kids wanted to be famous when I was growing up and I was one of them. And people used to just go like, that's cute. But I was like, but it's gonna, I didn't have any question of it. Mm. And the only time that I questioned it and, and 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 let me just be clear. Fame used to be my goal because I thought that well, that was like that would be the coolest thing to be in a restaurant and have everyone being like, oh, my God, Nikki Glaser's over there. That is not what I achieve, want anymore. I realize now I just want like love and, and also money at this point and, yeah. and just safety, you know, like that's what I really want in my life and with the respect of my peers. But when growing up, I was always wanting to be famous and I... Um, I just never, the one, one time I questioned it was when um, I wasn't getting in theater school. I wasn't getting in like the plays in high school even. And I didn't go to like a theater high school. So I'm like, I'm obviously not a good actress. I'm not going to be Jennifer Aniston. This sucks. And then I wasn't really a good singer. And I was like, I, I don't know what my in is going to be. There was no reality TV yet. There was like the real mm. world or whatever. But I was like, I don't want to like be famous for like throwing up in a hot tub or whatever they do on there. And I just really was like, I guess I'll have to kill myself someday. I was like really depressed about it because I just didn't see how I could have happiness in my life. And now I realize I could outside of that. But at the time, it was just Mm -hmm. there was never any doubt about it. You have the sauce and you don't even know what the sauce is. And this is Mm. this is I'm going to drop a bomb on you right now. Please. Why do you think it worked out for you? Mm, I think luck has a lot to do with it. I think the way I was raised, the support I had from my parents, the comedy that I was exposed to, and that I'm a, a genuinely like nice person that people want to be around. I think that that has helped me. But I think, I think that's a, it's a mixture of all of those things. And, ta- and you know, talent and hard work. 
what I've gathered. But you think it's marinara or something? What's the sauce? <laughs> <laughs> it's pink sauce. <laughs> what is it? Uh, it's your faith. You see, I almost said, I thought you said my face, and I go, oh, again, yeah, like, yeah, with yeah, the you, shorty, your my face. face? Your faith. In Whoa, the, when everybody dude. said, you're going to be famous, and he's like, I don't know. I just know it's going to happen. You went to acting school. didn't work out for you. You wanted to be a musician. did it work out for you. The world said no. Your talents in front of other people, they said no. But in your heart, you said, no, it's going to happen. So during the down, you had faith. And when you were up, Whoa, you had faith. That's what faith is. Faith. It's Because like I was raised in an atheist home. So I really don't like connect with faith. Faith to me is almost. It's believing what your eyes and ears can't see in here. Right. So you did it. You believed in yourself. I did. You had faith. That's really interesting. So the next time you have any, I noticed you said you still kind of deal with the eating issue. Yeah, I deal, deal with a lot of stuff. So just think about this. 0.1% of the world are in your shoes right now. You did it surely off of the fact that you believe you can do it. Okay. So now when you ever run into something that you feel that you can't do, remember you already did something. That millions and millions and millions and millions and millions and millions of people try to do every day. 30 million plus people move to LA to do this every year. And you did it. That's a real number. It's a real number. 30 million. 30 million people, especially now because of social media. It, it, Connecticut people are trying to make it. Oh, I everyone, guarantee you 70 everyone. million people a year easily. Easily are trying to do what Jesus. you're doing right now. Okay. And you I feel like most people it. don't even last a year in LA. Like they'll come and they yeah. just fucking dip. So it's, it's, yeah. a, it's a it's Can't a cycle shit. of people. But there's a lot of luck involved for sure. What's lucky about it? How uh, okay? Being born in the time where it, I was before social media, so I I didn't I didn't have that kind of competition. That's I'm not good hard, at social media. That's harder so. though. Do you feel like social that's your, your self doubt that's saying that it's luck when in reality it's just yeah? Your... I mean a little bit, but it but luck has to account for things. I mean there are people that were are born into living in Gaza right now. You know, like they don't have a chance to even move to Hollywood ever. You know, like that's luck that I was not born in a war torn country. That's it's... fucking just luck that my parents didn't abuse me in the ways that would discourage me from ever being able to, uh, you know, pursue a career and have a, even a little bit of faith in myself. The fact that I was born in this century where I live in a world where stand-up comedy is even an option as a career, which it wasn't until, you know, 50 years ago. The fact that uh, I was born in 1984 and that puts me in an age where women can even do comedy, which wasn't, like, I was born at the right, there's so much luck. But you took the cards that you were dealt and then you, you made them into something. Whereas a lot of people have the same cards as you and they try and try and try, but maybe they don't have that like same level of like delusional right. self-confidence that you have. Right. Yeah, I, it is delusional. That then that is that is luck that I was even born with the brain that would have a delusional self-confidence. You, you believe in do you believe in bad luck? Yeah. So well, like would I just you ever know, shatter I believe in a mirror? No, I don't believe I don't I, I yeah, I kind of believe in superstitious stuff, but I don't believe in bad I think luck is luck. Like there's good luck and there's bad luck, but some people, you know, when um yeah, I, yeah, I think some people have bad luck, but it's just like not winning the lottery. Like I won the lottery to even we all won the lottery to be born. We all know like the odds. Yeah. There's like it's like sixty million sperm and ours made it. It's like that's I think already it's a lot. One in four hundred trillion. Is okay, the that <laughs> like you're way off. Yeah, I yeah. thought it was even way off with sixty million. That's so we already won that lottery, which is wor that's the odds are worse than any lottery I've ever heard of in my life to win that. So or or. or so yeah, I feel like I there's bad luck. What is that? Your, I forget the question. No, no, no. I I, I don't. <laughs> I, I, I understand that some people might fall into uh, bad circumstances. But for example, Usman, right? He's the number one UFC fighting champ. Okay. Um, but he was in a very very terrible country, and he had to escape multiple very very devastating obstacles. But his faith brought him from a broken country to a great country where he became one of the greatest. So I believe... Can you be born... Can you... Sometimes people are born and they can't have faith. Like, don't you think that there are some people whose brains can't get to that point where they can ever have faith? What if he... What if he was just someone who didn't have faith? But like, he, did he, he choose he, to have faith? Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Faith is a choice. I could choose... But that's the funny part. When people go, how do you believe in a God? I'd be like, the same way that you don't believe in a God. It's the same yeah, action. I, it's I, I'm I get choosing that. the path that I'm walking mm -hmm. on. Um, so... Yeah, man, uh, for example, my parents, they, they came for, to this country. They didn't have much. My dad had to raise his parents because mm. they were too old. They couldn't even speak this language. Aww. And he could have sat around and put his hands in his pocket and been like, luck, I'm, I wasn't born in this country. Yeah, yeah. I but see he, what you're saying. But he put himself, I think this, I think my God is so merciful that if you believe 
anything is possible. Mm. Truly anything is possible. I believe that a girl that's from Connecticut probably having terrible parents and she wants to get out could be a girl who's in your stature. Do you think Connecticut's in, in a war zone right now or something? <laughs> 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 Did you place her in Connecticut? I was like, oh, this is going to be the privileged side of the story. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then Poor you gang. gave her <laughs> Poor white girl in Connecticut with parents who were kind of checked and out. I went to Connecticut right now. I was like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. That's okay, so we're getting funny. way too deep. Let's, let's no, brighten this up. Let's deep. brighten this up because well, I feel like I just. I, I, you, no, you're I, amazing. I just talked I to you and talk- I was like, fuck. I was no, talking you. to Reed about this. I was like, I don't want to be a, a guy that just he, he hears something now and just throws a cheesy line or a pickup or like or, or like a tag. And like, if I hear something, I just want to speak from my heart. And my heart no, is. No, this is the kind of podcasting I like to do, to be honest with you. Awesome. I'm not into like super jokey shit. Like, I save that for the stage. Fuck I like yeah. this shit. Are you guys both Indian? Is no. that your? Uh, no, I'm I'm, a, I'm Middle Assyrian. Eastern. You're what, what Middle Eastern? I'm Assyrian. Assyrian? Yeah. Where is that? Uh, well, we used to have Babylon, but that kind of went away. From okay. Me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. God was like, "You're done with that." And I'm so like, where okay. are Assyrians from? Um, literally, we're like we have no country. We're just kind of like roaming around talking about cool. Christ. Cool. Yeah. It was right. part of Iraq though, before, right? Uh, yeah. No, it was like it was where Iraq used to be. <laughs> okay. And what about you, David? <laughs> Parents? No. Yeah. Wh- what's uh, your nationality? Indian. Indian. Yeah, I mean, not nationality, but like your ethnicity. Parents okay. are from Mumbai. Oh, wow. Mumbai. All right. Yeah. Okay. Great and how place. long have you guys been here in your family? 25 years. 30 Did your years. Pa- are you first generation? I was born in Kansas City. Oh, Kansas. Nice. You're Missouri? Yeah. We're close yeah. by. Cool. We're from by. Missouri. Yeah. St. Louis. <laughs> nice. Hey. Yeah. I live there now. Oh, really? Yeah. I, I moved back during COVID and then I just was like, it's kind of chill here. Oh, no way. And I just uh, we moved to Arizona. Did you really? Mm. That's where you live? Mm-hmm. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. You don't need to be here. You can just fly in. I, it, it's Gotham time City. Here, time it's there. scary. I don't want her to walk around. I'm like a little oh, terrified. It is. Yeah. It's scary. When I'm when the sun goes down, I have to come home. <laughs> it's it's no joke. It's so funny. Sounds odd, but it's for my safety. It's, it's true. Uh, <laughs> I was walking this morning. I woke up at five for. Uh, I had to do hair and makeup at six, and so I was like, Jesus. I'm gonna go get coffee. So I'm walking down Sunset Boulevard, like in the nice air part of it. And uh, yesterday, I did the same thing in my hair and makeup. People go, you walked in the dark. Five in the morning, get coffee, and I was like, "Yeah, it was fine." And then today, I did it, and there was a homeless man fighting the air, um, and like in a really a huge fight with the air, and like, and I was so scared, and I just like waited for him to like patch things up with the with the guy he was fighting in his mind, and but then a, another homeless guy came along, and was like, "Can I escort you past him?" And like, I th- I think we're just gonna both die together. Like, I don't think this is gonna. <laughs> this guy really cares if I'm alone or with someone. But he got me past him, and Aww. he was like, he was a black guy, and the guy that was fighting the air was a black guy, and the black guy that helped me was like, "Yeah, I do this for white girls who who are scared of black men." And I go, I want to be clear, it's not because he's black. <laughs> he's it's because he's, he's, he's punching the punching air, right the right air and <laughs> <laughs> my, looks like he might have some kind of weapon on. Like it wasn't oh like, uh, it was really. And he was like, oh it's okay, gosh. white girl. I was like, I'll I'll let him have yeah, it. Okay. I probably am oh, just a dumb, God. scared white girl. Yeah. But it was it was really sweet. Of him, I was like, thanks, so man. Funny. Punching the air, screaming. It's because yeah. he's black, huh? Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then that guy walked me past him, and then he mugged me. That guy. I'm no, just kidding. No, oh my god! <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> I'm just kidding. It was so sweet of him. No, but that, that was L- hot to you, though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's dangerous. No, LA is crazy. Like, I mean, even just the other day, I was in uh, Nordstrom's rack, and you know, because now there's so many like people. There's women, right, who are part of like you know abducting these people, you know, and like human trafficking and stuff like that. <laughs> Oh, and and you're just worried age. about getting trafficked. You're that age. That's so. I love. What do you? I people are so creepy. No, you're right. You should be scared. But I am out of trafficking age. Like if they trafficked me, it would be to like clean their house or something. But Please, like they you, would traffic you. Okay. Oh, thank you so they would. much. You you're think welcome. I'll be trafficked? Yes. Like for sex. Yes. <gasps> Yes, oh, I this do. This is the greatest day of my life. <laughs> I, uh, I didn't think I was trafficable anymore, but um, you, you totally you were a traffic are. Traffic jam. <laughs> 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 yeah. They grab you. They're like, we need more recruiters. You need to go get girls. Yeah, I'm like the what's that? Jeez, Jelaine yeah. Maxwell. I'm like, do you guys want to rape me? And they're like, ew, gross. We want you to go get girls. <laughs> I'm like, oh, okay, I'm the recruiter. Um, yeah, that's a, that's a real fear. No, but people are. People just people are creepy well like just first of all men everywhere are just so creepy they'll say anything it doesn't matter if it's daytime or nighttime they're just say anything saying muttering but, weird things under and then you go what and you're like why am i saying what why am i, I trying them to- and i'm like <laughs> like i heard you yeah like, you know but no but i was in the <laughs> store and this woman is standing there and she's on the phone but she was on the phone like this you know like this 
And I'm down the, the hall and I was trying to pick and I was like, I'm not in the mood. I told her this. I was like, I'm not in the mood to feel creeped out right now. And so she was literally like, <laughs> so just she's on the filming phone. you. It seemed like it. So then I literally turned towards her, like, you're her. Yeah. And I was like, I'm just going to strut right in her direction. Good for you. So I just started walking. What are you walking. putting on a show? They're like, no, she has nice hips. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'm like, you're like, definitely get her. <laughs> that is she got a ring light. And she's really giving her one of these looks. You're like, <laughs> like, it sounds like you want to be trafficked. No, yeah, but I'm you're, like, you're treating the wall. They're the trying hallway, to like be catwalk. sneaky, right? And like traffic, or they're talking to someone on the phone. No, like if they know that I know, what is she gonna do? So I just started walking right up to her, and I stood really close to her, and she was looking at something, and then I acted like I was looking at something on the shelf, and I was like looking at her phone, and her phone with her screen was just black. I think she was just like. A weird way of talking on the phone. Right. I don't know. But you're like a way. If you come up close, they could close the screen like that. Yeah. But also, here's another thing. What would you do if she ran outside and you were like, oh, that was no big deal? And then you're putting your groceries out and you look at a van pull up and it's her driving. She's like, any. I knew it. Oh my God. I knew it. We knew you recruited. <laughs> I can't believe I, that's that is a that is a fear that I don't have. Like I think that men don't understand what it's like to be a woman. A lot of times, like they don't understand walking alone to your car. Like we just have a different. We're just a, we're scared of being raped like all the time. We're mm-hmm. you know and but I I just had that for you. Like I I'm, I'm not scared of being trafficked. Yeah. Because it's like I'm I'm kind of out of trafficking. Age. I, I know that we're all joking. People would fuck me. I know that. Like that's very nice. But no one's like I'm not <laughs> gonna be uploaded on Craigslist nice. anytime soon. It's like. I know there's MILF porn and stuff that people are into, but that is an interesting young girl fear that I think is a, is, is a good thing to fear yeah. because it's real and it's out there, but it's like, that's a new thing. It's a new it's thing, It's real. Yeah. And I just, I look young for my, like I'm, yes, I girl. love crafting and doing stuff. So I'm always at Home Depot and you know, I'm the only girl in Home Depot. When I go to Home Depot, I'm wearing no makeup. So I look like 15. Right. And it's just like, but they, the people at Home Depot are ruthless. People are just ruthless and, and nasty. I and, thought you said ruthless and I'm like, oh, they're building a roof. <laughs> Like, that makes, that sense. makes a lot of sense. <laughs> You've been hearing ruthless a lot. You've always wanted to call it out. So oh, bro, you have no idea. I'm holding myself back. My, all of my comedy is just you're just like How reviewing her. No, when we met, we were just we came, we became like quick friends. Like we just Very I don't know. Quick. We just Very really quick. clicked, yeah. and we would talk all day long. Like on text, we would just like fire back text. It was just like so like we were just so How long such before you slept time. together. <laughs> Damn. Come on now. First well, night. Come on now. No, no, no. Because I didn't want to be in a relationship. I was just like happy being single. And Technically, I was like, it was our I was first like, date. I, no, it wasn't. You said But it you was. knew no, each other for a while before that. It was our second. But uh, uh-huh. <laughs> no, but I, I just, I really did not want to be in a relationship. I was like, I, and I told him, I was like, we can be friends. I think you're so much fun. I love hanging out with you. I hear that song but all I, the time. Do you? <laughs> do yeah, not. when you're five, nine, five, ten, you hear that song every uh, girl. That's oh, that's interesting. I you just want to be friends. You're not tall enough. No, I just want to be but friends. Then, but you were successful at this point. So you're not. Not here. at the level I'm at right now. Okay. I was like, how long have you guys been together? Almost achieved the boy YouTuber. I think that's the worst type of thing. Okay. I see what you're saying. Yeah, yes. yeah, yeah. No, I definitely. My boyfriend's five eight and three quarters, and is and, and has that same like uh, thing of yeah. It was, it's a little bit more struggle for him. He has to be a little bit more. Charming I just heard and- the I heard the song over and over again, and it, it, it the, the, this is my thought process. And I hope a single man could hear me out. Uh, it's an easy formula to get any female you want. Don't try so hard and just yes. make them laugh. Yes. Easy. And then and then exit at a perfect time. Don't be around too much. Yes. So like you go in, you make Dude. them laugh. And then when we were first, I made her, I made sure that she was always thinking about me. So when I was gone, she was thinking about me. Wait, so how did went, you do that? By making her laugh and then going back to work. So like she Uh-oh. saw, oh, he yeah. has his shit together. And then I, I wasn't like when you're, okay. In any human's life, if you have too much of it, you get sick of it. Yes. So, true. and a lot of guys are like, no, no, this is what they want. I want attention. No, no. Everybody wants what they can't have. So, if you already have given yourself up all the way, then they're like, oh, shit, I already have you. That seems a little desperate. Anybody yes. can have you. And yeah. I don't want every something that anybody could have. So, if you put yourself at a, at a platform where you respect yourself, mm-hmm. then they have to respect you. And then you could control it. Mm-hmm. So, like. It was it, a perfect, like, pushable. He was like, please go on a date with me. But it was also, I didn't feel like he was like, he was like begging. You know what I mean? It was just like we're friends. He's like, okay, cool. You want to be friends? He's like, all right, you'll see. And I'm like, okay. He dude. was laid back and cool and yeah. chill about it. It wasn't like it wasn't. There was not a desperation, but no. there wasn't. I mean, I really compare it to the Travis Kelsey thing with um, Taylor Swift <laughs> right now because when he did the friendship bracelet thing and tried to give her his number, I was like, ooh, that reeks of desperation. And I was like, actually, it's not. He's just confident and like, I want you. Mm-hmm. And yeah. like, I I'm certain that we're gonna be together, and I'm confident, and I'm dying to take you out. 
but that's I'm how not, he was. I'm exactly. not gonna like. I'm not gonna beg, and I'm gonna sit here. But I'm gonna. I'm gonna say that I like you, and yeah. I'm just gonna stay in that and not think that it's like. Because I think sometimes guys hear that kind of advice of like play it cool, and they act like they don't like the girl. Mm-hmm. No, and, that's and, terrible. And that's, but you have to establish that you like her, that you value her, but not that you're gonna ruin yeah. your life to and, and be the party. your life. He be always the party. treated me like a queen, but he wasn't desperate. Yes. And it was just the fact that then when we did go on our first dates, we clicked so much, we had such a Aww. fun time. What am I gonna do? Yeah, you know what I, mean? I, I told her on our first date, which she do, which was supposed to be not a date because you're like, it was I don't our first date. date. It well, was now it is, date. but whatever. I was just trying uh, to be whatever, you know? So yeah, yeah, I told I her, that. I, I, That's I, cute. I, I put it's it boring. in her court. So I said, hey, do me a favor. When we go out tonight, I go bring a nice dress so I could take you out in it and then bring a bag of your cozy clothes. And if you That wanna, got me. I go, if oh, you want to spend cute. time with me after our dinner, jump that's in your cute. cozy clothes and then we'll just go hang out. We'll go to the like movies or we'll go mini golf again. I was like, you're planning for my outfit change? You're in. Yeah. <laughs> what? That's huge for me. <laughs> and it's confidence. And it's like you're going to want to stick around. <laughs> yeah. We, we heard it. <laughs> also, also not to be disrespectful. That's cute. Sex is a very big deal. It, it, that's mm. why I asked. Very it's a deal. very big deal. And people act like it's not and they, and they do it too quickly. And it's really something that I encourage women to be a little bit more protective of yeah um then because you th- i think a lot of women think that if i sleep with this guy he, it will take it to the next level he'll like me more no you just and you, it really no. is the opposite he will actually like you less and it's it, it, if he's mm. not in love with you you gotta wait till they're like pretty enamored and in and then you can sleep with them and then the, their like of you will not change mm. but if they're on the if they're still building to a like and you sleep with them too soon in their weird brain, in their subconscious, even though they're not thinking about you, there's a little bit of like, this was too easy. Yeah. Oh, She's not 100%. a woman of value. And I hate, don't feel bad, the girls, if you slept around and you're like, oh my God, you're calling me not a woman of value. Of course not. I've done it too. But if you are someone that makes a guy wait, it establishes value and men want valuable things. And so it's always best to wait, even though you want to fuck him so bad mm-hmm. and you think, that, and he's begging you. So you think like, when usually when people beg you for something, please, George, will you hand? Will you, can you give me a diet coke, please? You think if I get it for her, she'll like me more, mm. and it usually mm. works that way. When people mm-hmm. want things and you give it to them, we're trained as kids like if someone really wants something, give them a hug or whatever, and they'll like you more. Sex is just the only thing that's the opposite of that. Mm-hmm. As a girl, no matter how much they beg, do, don't do it for them. And, and a lot of girls will be like, "Well, I'm doing it for me. It feels good." Just wait. Just always wait. I feel like 30 days is like a healthy window. Like from when you meet them, that's like I the think best it's till you can trust them. Until they like until you think he's in love with you. I think it they have to be like kind of in love with you. I will go out on a limb and also say I don't even blame guys who change after sex. They obviously think of how many times you guys have been so into a girl and you think after sex I will still like her and for whatever reason <laughs> You just don't. Can you I, can't help it, and it goes away. It's not like it's your. You I, don't. You I'm don't not plan gonna lie. I, I've never done that. You've never slept with a girl and been like, oh, I kind of don't like her as much now. So when, when I was uh, come on. So when I was um, uh, I lost my virginity at 19 because I was I was dating this girl named Carmen. And she cheated on me with my best friend. So I got mad and I, I slept with another girl. Okay. Don't even remember what that girl looks like. And then when I got into having sex, I just remember because I wanted to be, I wanted to wait till marriage. And I always knew that sex is a little bit more than just what everybody else made it out to be. Um, and what I try to do is I try, and this sounds fucking terrible, but I, I every girl that I ever encountered, I wanted to make sure I counted them like, my daughter's going to fuck around. I just want, I wish she's with a man that at least cares about her. Yeah. And so... Yeah. I would always tell the girls because it was around right around my success, right? So I started naturally understanding these really hot girls started liking me when I was a little bit more successful. I'm not going to take that and be like, fuck them. They only wanted me because this. I didn't take that approach. I was, vi- I was like, okay, at least I have control now. So when I had control, I said, hey, just to let you know, I am fooling around with other women right now because I'm focused on my work. But I'd love to have fun with you and just like take you out. So I always treated them like they were my girlfriend. I took them out. I bought them flowers. I had mm-hmm. sex with them. But that way there was no guilty feeling. And also if I was w- with another girl while I saw them. That other but girl? They knew. They knew they that know. you weren't the. They weren't the one yeah. in your life. So you weren't. This is the difference between an f boy and a nice guy. Bringing it around to my show, f boy <laughs> island, which Davidge was on. It's on the third season now. He was an f boy. F boy. <laughs> It's a loose term, but like that's not an f boy. They we would probably if you came on our show, we'd probably make you an f boy because you you it, that guy that you were at that time because you were sleeping with a lot of women, dating a lot of women, so equals f boy. But no 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 no, I would <laughs> classify you as a nice guy because you're being honest about it. You're not misleading those women. An f boy is a guy that mm-hmm. it, it leads women on to believe that you can be my girlfriend you're when the they know one. damn mm-hmm. well that they are not gonna be. This girl is not gonna be their girlfriend, and I think that is what makes someone. Um, 
um, a, a, an, an F boy, but like you just dating around and being honest. How though did these women not become attached to you, sleeping with you and getting flowers and going on dates and go, Hey George, I want more. Yeah. Uh, and did it, when that did happen, how do you handle that? Listen, I, I told you what I told you. I, I can't be the only one for you or I just, I'll just be respectful. So when I, I, I was, when I was, when I first met you and we were starting to get a little serious, I knew that this might be potentially the children, uh, like my, my, my children's mother. Mm -hmm. So I wanted to approach it differently than I did with every other girl. Yeah. So I immediately ended it with other girls to like put class on her. So that way my daughter could follow in her footsteps of what's. Damn. She, she should be doing this uh, daughter and she, not yet, but really I still, holding a lot. Yeah. Yeah. You, of course you have to plan your future. So, uh, that's incredible. but when I was in my necessarily my fuck boy, it was actually ironically enough, even better for me because they were so casual with me. They would bring their friends around and their friends wanted to get involved. Mm. So it was like, it actually opened up a door for more women and they were never like, girls like the fact that they can't put a straddle on you and just be like, oh, that's it, that he's mine. And they, they, they can't fathom the fact that like, like you're, you're feeling, you're like, oh, I want a guy that could go everywhere. Yep. A lot of girls feel this Well, that's way. why on the, our show, Ed, the girls always end up going for the F boys because they don't, they want the challenge. Mm -hmm. yeah. And you were, and they're being honest about the challenge. I mean, most of the guys on the show are like, yeah, I'm an F boy. And at one point in the show, we had, they all reveal that they are one and it doesn't change the way the girls feel about them. It makes the the girls like them more you know it's so very fun. interesting i would sit there and like because again i was it i had a very stupid past when i was not appropriate man i would sleep with women that had boyfriends and their boyfriends would cheat on them and they would get back at them by sleeping with me sure um i'll i'll beep out their names but there was actually i'm not even gonna mention it but there's a yeah. lot of people that we know in the industry that their girlfriends were acting up uh mm. and I would, I would, dude, it's so funny. Like there would be nights where the girl would come over and I think I'm going to sleep with her, but I end up like just coaching her in life and she would go back and like fix her relationship. Yeah. Jesus Christ. And I was just like, damn, I didn't fuck her up, but I fucked her mind up. Like, you know, like damn. it was just like, I, I dealt with everything within it with integrity. So that way I could go to bed knowing I, I am a man of my word. Yeah. So like, I feel like if you're, there's a, there's, there's a man that we all know in this industry that cheats on his wife all the time. Right. He would borrow my neighbor's house to go bring girls and that man i would never do business with i don't want to break bread with and i have no respect for this man if, if sean o'malley for example right does his wife know i don't know that's because the part then what what if what if she did because so I, sean o'malley for example he has an open relationship i respect him okay because he's a man enough to be like hey i love the girl that i'm with i love my daughter and i this is a problem that i'm dealing with but the thing is he put his heart on the table i could respect a man who's honest yes but a man who lies to the woman he's building a home with Oof. And, and 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 building a foundation with that's your love that's who you're sharing your your covenant with and you're doing that to her mm -hmm. the fuck are you gonna do to me if mm -hmm. we go into business i think that's such a good point so i don't i don't mess with people that uh that cheat or if i find out that they cheat or lie your word is everything to me oh dude it's like lying i don't i don't lie i try not never to lie in my life and because i read this book about lying and how even like if you know you are at, at dinner with a friend and i go oh my god george this is so fun i don't want to go to this thing i have to go to can you just hold on one second like let me just call and be like hey um i'm really feeling sick tonight like i can't make it i'm so sorry yeah I'll, I'll talk to you soon okay and then i hang up you've just seen me lie very easily mm. so whether you think it or not something in your subconscious is going to be like i'm not gonna really trust her that much even though she just lied to hang out with me more and it seems like i'm the one she's being honest with sh how easy was that mm. so i really try not to do even that little shit anymore like if i can't go do something i don't say i'm sick i don't say I'm in traffic. I just say I don't. I can't make it today. It, it, because the truth always true. comes out. Man. It might be yeah. because I don't like the person. I don't feel like doing it. But I can't mm -hmm. do it. Is the truth. Mm -hmm. I can't. I'm writing you, yeah. and you don't need to say a why. People offer why all the time because they think they need to give something to, to bail on someone. It's enough that you just can't. Whether you're depressed, yeah. whether you're anxious, where you're just like not in the mood, just say you can't. Yeah. Don't lie. I, you ask him, bro. I'm too brutally honest, so he has to yeah. filter my thoughts to sure. the brands or like relationship that we have because I'm like. I, you know, it's so funny. You literally just mentioned this before we jumped on the podcast. Uh, he says that my strong suit is that I'm brutally honest, but I give it in a loving way. Yeah. And so I, 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 that's the best compliment well, I could ever get. It's not judgmental because you're not, you're honest with someone. Like when, in the times that you've been honest with me on this podcast and said some things that might come off as like harsh of like, you don't value yourself, whatever it is. because I care. Yeah. It's, and it's non-judgmental. You're someone that I instantly like. And so, like, like as soon as I met, uh, I mean, David, I've known, but like. 
you're I think that's what is approachable about you and what makes that easier to handle is that you might be calling me on some shit that's not good, but you don't like me less because of it. No, and you see that you don't judge it. Yeah. And I think that's the most important thing. People can be honest just as long as you're not like you are fucked up. You can say, Nikki, you're fucked up, but it's not like you, you're I think you think I'm a bad person. I don't get that vibe nah, from you. When I, you say I appreciate I'm up. you saying that. My and this might sound cheesy and it might sound like it's written, but it's truly how I go about life. One day I'm gonna be presented in front of a great God that has I have no business being in his presence. But because of his grace and mercy, he's like, you know what, even though you've messed up so many times, come into this house and celebrate with me. And so when I look at people like you, you're my sister in my life, I feel like you're my sister. I know that you're going to go through the same type of warfare mentally that I went through. So what kind of man would I be if I know that you're going to probably go through this and condemn you for it? That doesn't like if, if you go to a doctor because you're sick, how hard is that going to be when you're like, doctor, I'm sick because, you know, I slept around. And he's like, oh, you slept around. You slept. And now you're like, you're too. You don't even want to talk. But if you're like, hey, you know, I slept to this. He's like, hey, no worries. Like, this is what we need to handle. And this is that. Yeah. Now, now you feel safe and you and you want instructions to get out of the hole that you're in. And you can't do that with hatred and judgment. I, I totally I think yeah. that that's the best way to be is someone that can call people on their stuff, but it's just non-judgmental and, and empathetic and realize like you're not perfect. So why should you like just this, the look that we give people of like, why would they do that? Like I'm doing, um, Tom Sandoval's podcast later today. He's the guy that like cheated on Vanderpump rules. Do you know that whole scandal that was this year? It was like no. the biggest. Wait, hold on. You, wait, there was a girl that was thinking about uh, from Vanderpump, right? And it was about the scandal. Yeah. Lisa? Rachel, he cheated on Ariana with Rachel and it was like the biggest news uh, like i don't know how you guys didn't hear about it but you d it's it's totally fine so it, what is I heard what, that there was a, uh, a yes. scandal but i don't know what the scandal i, I, I agree because i didn't watch vanderpump rules Jess, so yeah. i just d i just looked into it yeah, but I he's see. doing a pod he's doing a podcast now and he's really the most hated person in could in you show give business. us a backstory on like this? i really don't understand it so he is on this show and he's been on the show for nine years like and he's or maybe he's been dating this girl for nine years and she's on the show with him and they're like the couple on the show they and then married. it comes up they got married they were married no, I don't think they were, they were married. No, no, no. They were living they were together, but they've been together for like nine years. Oh, And he damn. cheated on her with her best friend. And she, the girl is, that girl is also on the show. Maybe not her best friend, but a good friend. Did he cheat on her on the show? It, like when you go back and look at old episodes, you can kind of go. And did uh -huh. he think that this wasn't going to come out? Yeah. He, he never thought it would come out and it did. Mm -hmm. And he's like the, the, you know, Thank the you. most hated person. And, and I'm, I got asked to do his podcast and my publicists are like, do you really want to do this? And I'm like, yeah, because people like, should he, I, the way that he was attacked in the media, I was like, are people trying to get him to kill himself? Like, is that what you want? You want this person to never, ever be able to work again, function again. Like he made a mistake. This is a horrible thing. He did. He's apologetic. Everyone's just like, you're just apologizing because you went your career back. It's like, could he also be sorry too? Like maybe he is sorry. Like, uh, and, and I think that a lot of my friends are like, why are you going on that podcast? He's such a piece of shit. And it's like, I don't know because it's it's he yeah he cheated but I just I don't have the judgment on top of that and I, I do for some people for some things but I think that um I I'm going into it with that of like I don't I don't know I don't know what was going on in his life when this happened is he with the that female still I know I think they they broke up okay so but yeah he's like but I think people really like to cancel people and um well, people, they do and they judge like people and go I would never do that people in the comments I would never cheat it's like you're the product of your dad cheated on your mom. Like, like you, yeah. you, people cheat all around. Like, and I'm not saying it's okay just because a lot of people do it, but I just think that people really want to condemn people to build themselves up. And, um, mm -hmm. and being judgmental is just like so in now, especially with, with social media mm -hmm. and being able to comment anonymously is mm -hmm. it's something that you guys have never not known, but there is a oh, time. No, no, no. I, I had before. That. I had that. People just they didn't. They, but I got shit talked on my face, bro. Like I like that's why when people like I don't get it. Like I was hated before internet hate. Like I yeah. got hated. I got my my principal would told my mom like he needs to leave. Like he can't be here. Like people would meet me in the bathroom just to fuck me up. Like Jeez. they wow. hated me, bro. They made videos about me. They spit really? on me. What? Oh yes. Yeah. Let me tell you something. I take the comments over the fucking actual <laughs> ass beating any day, bro. Like, sure. Bro, like these people are like, oh, they said something mean. It's like, bro, like you, their their icon is Stitch. 
<laughs> and they're misspelling what they're saying to you. Like <laughs> I know. You get what I'm saying? Like so like the word like I get if it comes at a mass amount, then you're like, whoa, that's a lot of people saying that yeah, shit. Yeah, anyone's gonna get in their head. Yeah, yeah. anybody can get yeah. in their head, but it's it's like when they're like it, you don't understand back in the day. No, 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 no. Back in the day, way worse. If people did not mm-hmm. like think about per, okay, our aspect. If people didn't like us. 20 years ago on stage they not only boo us but they would throw shit on stage what? no you're crazy <laughs> people used to be on tv and have no feed no one was receiving constant hate or people weighing have in you like watch def jam okay maybe but i'm not going up at the apollo there were not like people weighing in on celebrities constantly and mm-hmm. commenting about them and having opinions about them it just didn't happen there was tabloids and yeah. you would might read it in the magazines and maybe talk about it at the hair salon but there wasn't constant you log on now and it's just constant f- streaming of like any post you look at if you don't know how to feel about it there's a comment right underneath it to get you started mm-hmm. and yeah. don't tell me that you don't read comments and, and and it definitely peppers how you feel about the thing because i i I'm susceptible to it. So my me, my, I have this text thread with me and my friend Kave, and he just sends and he says read comments, read comments, TikTok videos and comment sections. Dude, I would never are the look at funniest that shit. shit. <laughs> Really? Ever. I hear that's where it's worse. I would always tell you that because every time I watch a TikTok, bro. I have to look at the comments. You do, section. and it's, it's and so funny. funny. People say funny shit, but in it the does section. sometimes. Funny terrible. Doesn't do. it help you sometimes if you like something? I'll be like, this is kind of funny, and then someone will point out something really lame about it, and I'm like, oh, oh yeah, fuck it. and it will. Suits. They did that for suits. It bro. will teach you how to hate things. So sometimes I will like yeah. something so earnestly, and then I read a comment, and I'm like, oh, this does suck. Oh I my re- god, oh, this dude, is cringe, I know. and I feel bad. Yeah. Or so so. I wish there was I just wish there were less comments so that we could make our own opinions or at least you had to like law, like go to a message board to talk about comments. It wasn't just under the video right away. And I can't even I don't read comments about myself. I will never read a comment on any video that is posted on YouTube or anything. I can't even go to a video of me on YouTube to see how many views or something because the first comment will just be waiting for me. Now they just put it right. Yeah, that's a preview. I hate that. Just, I want people to be able to have to like find comments, not to like, it's just, this is how you should feel about it. This person that said a funny thing about your face or like the, your shirt that you're wearing and makes and ruins the whole video for everyone. Cause I know that I watch videos and I'm so often influenced by comments. Um, I, I get, but I, I do love, I, but you're right. The comments are the, I, I always read them. You've had it. so many times, like, we won't go through, but so many times in this podcast, you've had to cut out things. It's a joke. And I think that's what this, like, there's so many people that are so sensitive. <gasps> he said a, he said black. And it's like, yeah, for the joke, it's just a fucking, everyone gets so sensitive. And I get it because people don't have identities and they need to identify by what offends them. You know, like, Ooh, if, yeah. 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 Hey, don't walk back. Hey, hey, we all just went, <laughs> and she was like, about to mow past that. <laughs> Let's sit in it. Let's hey, pray on it. Like, <laughs> Let's sit in this Burger King you for a second. Me. I was just there, and I, dude, I'm taking a detour, bro. Okay, wait, wait, wait hold on. Let's ru- let's run that by, but like one more time. Hit that. People line. don't have identities. We lack culture, especially. I'm sorry, white people. We don't have culture. We don't have family. We don't have like uh, we're kind of ashamed of even the stuff. Our lineage, a lot of times, has so much mm. shame in it. So we can't be like, this is who I am. That's why I'm like, I'm a Swifty. It's like I can and be something, you know. And a lot of times, the things that drop the most emotion in us aren't the things that we love it's the things that that we hate or the things that like you know my cousin died in a car accident that's the biggest thing in my life that i can look at and get people's attention when i bring that up Mm. so if i hear a joke about a car accident suddenly this is where my identity comes in i have been victimized by a car accident it's not funny that you brought one up and it's like i i totally get that I, i i do think you're being a little performative but also you are in mourning over your cousin's loss or whatever happened to you but um the joke I'm making is not making fun of the person in the car accident. So it's acknowledging that there's yeah. car accidents. Dude. Yeah. And I'm sorry if I say the word rape on stage and you've been raped and that's triggering to you. I honestly believe that could be really triggering to someone who has been a rape victim just to hear that word. And I'm sorry I used it even in this if you're suffering out there. But that doesn't mean I can't say the word because it's a thing that although I have not had it happen to me, I fear it all the time. So I'm just not going to ever talk about it. Then we just don't say the R word. What if I am R? Do can I, can I I have to go, I was R. Sorry, did that <laughs> offend anyone at this clinic? Like I, I, yeah. it's, you have to talk. You have to be able to speak of things. And if it does offend people I, at my shows, I always say, if I offended you to the point that you had to leave, that you were so triggered that you had a, a, a you know, a. A, a somatic response where you were like ha- hyperventilating and had to leave. I will refund your money. I'm so sorry that happened to you. I like, 
I would never, ever, if I knew you were going to be here tonight, I would have cut that joke, but I didn't. And I'm right. sorry, and I'm not going to cut it next time unless you yeah. tell me you're coming. You know, like, I don't want to offend you, but I can't walk around tiptoeing around people's yeah. uh, 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 things they're offended by. Get, get a hobby. You've done like quite a few of the roasts, yeah. right? Where you go up and you roast. Mm. Yeah. Hilarious, by Thank the way. Thank you, girl. Has there ever been, because I mean, obviously everybody who's sitting on stage, <laughs> they know that, whatever, you guys. Okay. It happens been. to me sometimes. <laughs> I'm foreign. Where okay. are you from? <laughs> I'm from France. Awesome. Oh, really? Oh my God. You can't tell at all. <laughs> Thank you. You're so nice. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you for that. Thank you. You really are. You're French. Oh my God. I, French people are assholes. They're so cool. The, no, there's no one like the French. I'm They're sorry. Just okay. like I'm so intimidated by you now. Okay, go on. Go What's on. your I'm question? <laughs> start, start over. Start over. Because I was an asshole. My bad. Go ahead. Okay. Okay. <clears throat> Can you ask it in You've French? You've done a lot of roasts. Yeah. Yeah. Ask. ask I'm it not doing that. Okay. 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 <laughs> sorry. You're not <laughs> like good. our little puppet. Come on. Be French. No, no, okay. No. Um. Look, I'm wearing stripes. Okay. Yeah, you are. Uh, <laughs> so, but you've done a lot of roasts, right? And then the people who are no, sitting no, no, on set, stage. No, no, Set up the question. Want me to we're restart? Gonna, yeah, because we're cutting all around that. No, that was good. All that was fun. Okay. She's French. Enough. I'm intimidated. Are, are you funny? I had the funny joke about her being rude, and but she's nice, so she didn't. Whatever. Cut this. <laughs> yeah, we're <laughs> cut it. All right. All right okay. okay. Sorry. 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 Go. So, right, yeah. the people who are on stage, they know they're there to be roasted, right? Yes. They know it's coming. Yes. But have there been some people afterwards where, like, they kind of hold that grudge with you with whatever you might have said on stage? I, w I wish I could say yes because it makes a more interesting question. But mm. no, like, everyone's truly pretty cool about it. I think there was one roast where... Um, the roast of Ann Coulter, who's a horrible person, mm -hmm. and um, and and you know I don't really uh, she can't help it that she's uh, mean and um, you know racist, but she uh, oh I saw oh, yes I know so who she about. she left shortly after the roast was over like it ended and we were all supposed to take pictures together. There's an after party and she was out of there right away because mm -hmm. she kind of bombed too and I think she just wanted to leave. Okay, but um <sighs> but generally everyone's kind of that's what makes it so fun is because everyone signed up for it and everyone mm -hmm. knows what they're in for and there have been times where I've written jokes leading up to it and I get to the show and they're like you can't do those jokes like <laughs> Caitlyn Jenner does not want any jokes about the car accident she was in or what Ooh. you know and I'm like that's my opener like mm -hmm. there are times where it's like I've had that's to make it really was, dude. It, was, <laughs> it, was, it, was it was it was it I've been devastated by the cuts why does Caitlyn have so much power on what they could say because um that was a big name for that roast to get and we it's not as the goal of the roast to to like offend people so deeply they want to walk off the stage yeah. so the, the car accident that she was involved in a woman died and I think out of respect for that per woman's family and out of respect for like just I mean it was it's probably a really traumatic thing that happened to her and it's like okay i'm here you can make fun of me transitioning to being a woman you can make fun of my family that's insane just one thing's off limits and yeah. i think that's okay that's cool. that's but okay. they didn't tell me to last right. second and that was, was annoying right, like, right. comedy mm -hmm. central was scared to ask her if those jokes would be okay. Uh, okay and i was like can i ask her and they're like no we don't want you to talk to her and i'm like well, I need to know if this is going to make her walk off the stage in the middle of the show. I don't want that to happen. This is like a fun event. So mm. right before someone right before was like, hey, and she was like, she had heard that I was she had heard some comedian was going around town practicing jokes. And that had mentioned she was like, if there is a mention of the car accident on stage, I will walk off stage. So gotcha. with that, I was Jeez. like, OK, then, yeah, I mean, we all have things that, are, you know, are I, I wasn't big enough at the time. I'm still not big enough to be like, if this is said about me and I don't have anything like that in my life, that's that traumatic. I think if I probably accidentally killed someone with my car i'd probably be like hey can you not bring it up on this night where yeah. i'm like supposed Seems to like be entertaining right <laughs> yeah, yeah. it really isn't too much can like, i hear like your to joke about that you're gonna say yeah i was gonna say that um caitlin jenner what a beautiful woman you killed with your car oh my <laughs> oh my <sighs> so was it was my opener I, there was also another one of like i know um you uh I go, you don't get your, you're t too old to get your period, yet you still have blood on your hands or something like that. Oh. I mean, it was like, God. it was brutal. Dude. Jesus. It wasn't nice. You know what you're really good at? Dude, good job. Thank you. Hey, do you want me to keep that in or do you want me to beat no, that? No, I like it. <laughs> yeah, like, yeah, it's fine. I, I needed I, people wow. to hear it. Yeah, I, mean, I, yeah, I wrote I it. I fuck with you because you're a dog for that <laughs> one. I, <laughs> what I'll say is like, I don't feel like, pr I'm proud of like, the, it's a funny joke, but it's like, uh, it's not funny to joke about a woman's tragic death. But at the same time, if I die tragically, please someone make jokes about it because it's true it happened yeah. let's not like never talk about me again if i die tragically like i think that's so weird when we don't talk about taboo subjects because then they just we can't let's not mention that person because they died tragically and then it's like okay well then they just don't get mentioned yeah. anymore it's like that's let's sad. just be let's just talk about what's going on i don't know it's like 
I think I'd rather be made fun of posthumously than like not talked about at all. Right. So if Pound I die it. tragically, please in the comments sound off. You have some <laughs> fucking. <laughs> uh, <laughs> the the you have that like Kanye. He goes, I'd rather have them talk. I, I'm actually more scared if they're not talking about me at all. It's like a line yeah. in a song, right? Yeah. Well, I don't want that. Please don't. Only when I'm dead can you mouth off because I'm dead and like you can't hurt me anymore. Fair enough. But what don't do you, say anything. What do you about think you're going to be remembered for? Not that you're going to die. Probably the roast. Soon, I think. But I hope uh, something else. I hope. Um. I I just want to be remembered for. I want people to say that I was kind. I think that when I think back on it, like the thing that's on my grave is like. She was, whenever it gets back to me, when people go, I know someone who worked with you and did your makeup five years ago. I'm always like, <gasps> and they always are like, and you were so nice to mm -hmm. her when you didn't need to, because you know, like celebrities or people that get f a little bit, not that I'm like uh, that famous or anything, they can just be so mean to people. And so mm -hmm. I always love when I hear back about myself, you ever hear something back about yourself and you're like, oh, that was pretty funny that day. Or like you hear yeah, a joke yeah, yeah, and you're yeah. like, okay, I'm actually cool. <laughs> I like hearing when I've been nice to people. And Adam I Sandler think, effect. Yes. That's, mm -hmm. th that, if, uh, that's what I'd like to be remembered for is that I spread joy, not even with comedy, but just like made, just made people feel appreciated and, and wasn't a dick. Mm, Nikki like Glaser, that. she wasn't a dick. That's funny. Yeah. That's what I want on my grave. <laughs> she was. You are what you eat. <laughs> <laughs> No, but I was going to say, too, is you're so good at your punchlines. Like, when you were saying, like, the Caitlyn joke, oh. you're so good at, you say something, you think you know where it's going, and then you bring it back really Those quickly. Those are my favorite kind of jokes. You're just so good at that. Thank and it's just, you. it just comes after one after another. Thanks, girl. Yeah. Yeah. Before we sign off on this unbelievable podcast. I love you guys. I really appreciate it. I really, like, I'm, this is what I love about a podcast is where you can become, like, friends with people. It really is a conversation where it's, like... We're just friends sitting around talking. It yeah. happens to be recorded, but this is kind of feels like what we would do if we all just like went on a friend date. Hundred yeah. percent. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Good. And two things. Sorry. Two things. I'll yeah. be back to you. First thing, you remind me so much. I'm sure you get this a lot of Kristen Bell. <gasps> oh my god. Do you really? get that? No. Who's Kristen what? Bell? Who's Kristen is that Bell? the girl from Vampire Diaries? No, she's Whoa. from um, The Good Place. Yeah. She's married to Dax Shepard. Oh, come on. You don't she, ever get House that. House of Cards, Never. right? She was on House of Cards. Dude, you so. kind of you look like her, <gasps> and you talk like. Some Sometimes Thank you. you say certain things so much like her. Oh my God, thanks. Mm -hmm. You know who you remind me of? Taylor Swift. Shut up. Dem you just that was so Dem 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 basic, Divage. Um, so, my one question. Yes. So, we could like parlay out of here because I know you're, you're going to Vanderpump Rules. <laughs> uh, there's, a, there's a female at the age of 25 to maybe 30. Okay. Uh, they suffer from a mental illness that they're just starting to understand that they actually have. Okay. Uh, they have a lot of faith in their career path. Uh, mm -hmm. What are the tools that you used to help fix the mindset that you have? Like, for example, the talking in the chair, or seeing yes. a therapist. What were steps that you were very proud that you made that helped you be in the place that you are today? That's a really good question. I think really letting yourself off the hook, feeling sorry for yourself when people don't want to give you that. I think letting yourself feel your feelings um, when I think like if you're a depressed, I'm a really depressed person and sometimes I can be like, Oh, are you sad? Like, yeah, I'm sad. Like let yourself feel your feelings because whatever you're struggling with, it's probably some feelings that are backed up that you didn't get to address as a kid. Um, and I think ask for help, talk about it. And journaling, I think is so important that people don't look at that. And like, you just need to, you just need to talk to someone about your feelings. I think so many people just don't, um, being more honest with yourself and, um, and I think like finding a God, finding a higher power, finding something that where you don't feel like you're controlling everything, because when you are in control, you're always going to disappoint yourself because you're going to ultimately like fail and you're going to feel like, what the fuck is wrong with me? And it's like, if you put it, I like to blame God sometimes, like not, you know, like as much as that's probably sometimes not the way you don't like to hold the weight of the world by yourself. Yeah. And sometimes I can go, well, this is God's fault, meaning this is God's plan for me or whatever. But if I want to get the fault off of myself, I can say like, well, I didn't choose to feel this way today. Or I didn't choose to say that dumb thing I said last night that I can't stop. The Why would I say that? It's like, I'm always trying my best of maybe just cut myself some slack, you know, like be nicer to yourself. And, and I think a really important thing is to keep close a picture of yourself or even like if you're, I, th I keep a picture of my boyfriend as a child in my phone to remind me when I'm upset with him. Like he's just this little boy that's just trying to like make it in the world. And we're all just that little kid. So like find the yeah. age where maybe something fucked up happened to you or where you think you're maybe stuck and just have a little empathy for yourself as like a kid. 
I like, love that. Like, just be nice Show to yourself. Show yourself grace. Yeah. That's great advice. Yeah. Love yourself. Yeah. Practice loving yourself. Because if you cannot love yourself and hold the standard of what other people should be treating you, uh, you're going to get lost in this world. Thank you guys for tuning in. Thank you so much, Thank Nikki, you, for tuning in Thank and you. being a part of it. I'm so happy to be here. This I would love so to fun. run one back with you in the future as well. I, would I had love a great it. time with you. Oh my God. I had, to, I had one too. Thank, Thank you. Thank you so much. I'll see you guys next time. Bye. Peace.